Hello. Now audible? Yes, sir. Okay. So any doubt up to this part in this heat transfer? No, okay. Let me define you one more thing in this part. Formation of ice. Suppose this is surface of water. and is exposed to <clears throat> atmosphere where temperature is suppose theta degree Celsius, which is less than zero. So let's say minus theta degree Celsius. Due to this, there'll be freezing of ice or melting of freezing of water into ice. Suppose, At any instant, amount this layer of water has been converted into ice. Length is y, and further to freeze it, let's say its width is dy. So due to this, or due to this formation of ice or freezing of water, it should require some cold energy from outside. So let's say cold energy from this point is traveling along this way to freeze this much amount of water into ice. So according to formula, heat current equals to dq over dt, which is equals to ka times delta theta, that is theta not only, since it will start freezing at zero degrees Celsius. So temperature of this point will be zero degrees Celsius. That's why it is zero degree minus of minus theta becomes theta. Divide by its length, y. This much amount of cold energy will responsible to freeze it. So it will be <clears throat> heat required to change the state. So we can call it as latent heat. So dq equals to mass of liquid to be freezed times latent heat of fusion divided by time taken equals to Ka times theta divided by y. Mass is equals to density into <clears throat> volume, and volume will be equals to area into length. So mass is equals to density of water to be freezed times area of contact or area of surface exposed to its height times latent of fusion divided by dt equals to Ka theta divided by y. So this a and this a will cancel out. We have to calculate time in which layer of ice or formation of ice would change from one level to some other level. So move this dy into y equals to k theta divided by rho into lf being constant multiplied by dt. Now integrate it. At time t is equal to zero, it's initial level. Let's say it is y initial. At some time t, it will become y fine. Now integrate this part, you will get time in which formation of ice will change from some y initial level to some new level, y final. Is it clear?
Yes, sir. So on solving, you will get K theta divided by density of water into latent of fusion times T equals to Y on degrading becomes Y square by two. So it will be half Y final square minus Y initial square. So this will be a required relationship to find time between formation of layer of ice. Just write it down. Yes, sir. Okay. Now next last topic of this chapter is radiation. Do you know what do you mean by radiation? Ifra? Yes, sir. What do you mean by radiation? Sir, it is like light which comes out from phone. Radiations come out. Okay. In terms of physics, we may define it as wave. Wave is phenomena of transfer of energy from one point to another without the displacement of matter particle. So it is a type of wave. In wave, we have mainly three different types. One is called electromagnetic, second is called matter wave, and third is called mechanical wave. Mechanical wave, which needs any medium for their propagation. Matter wave, wave associated with matter particle. And third, electromagnetic wave, which wave which does not require any medium for its propagation. So we can say this radiation is a type of electromagnetic wave which does not require any medium for its propagation and it can travel even through vacuum. So radiation is, it is an electromagnetic wave <clears throat> which can travel also through vacuum at speed of light. In general, electromagnetic wave consists of eight different parts, cosmic rays, gamma rays, UV rays, X-rays, visible light, infrared rays, radio waves, and microwave. You'll learn more in more detail about it in next in next year in class 12 there, there is a special chapter to describe it whole but in this part to define radiation we mainly define only two part of it one is called visible light radiation to which our eye is sensitive to consists of seven different component color that is Wave cure. 
And next is infrared rays, radiation which having heat. So it is also called heat wave. So in this part, we have to define only these two radiation. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, <clears throat> first theory related to this radiation is reverse theory. It says every object which having temperature greater than zero Kelvin. I defined you in kinetic theory of gas about thermal kinetic energy of particle. Ke is equals to three by two kVT. If a body having temperature greater than zero Kelvin, then it will have thermal kinetic energy associated with it. And due to that vibration, it may emit radiation as well, according to proposed hypothesis. So it says every object which having temperature greater than zero Kelvin can emit and absorb radiation at all time. So according to Prevost hypothesis, every object having temperature greater than zero Kelvin can emit and absorb radiation all time. Now, according to this, we may define why we feel cold in front of fire, in front of ice, and why we feel hot in front of fire. why we feel <clears throat> cold in front of ice and similarly why we feel hot in front of fire any idea Ifra, any idea? So because our body will also release some radiation, means it will emit because its temperature is more than zero Kelvin and Good. ice will also emit. That. So what will happen? So Let me define. Cold. Suppose this is human body. <clears throat> Its normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. So in terms of Kelvin, it will be about 310 Kelvin. Temperature of ice will be zero degrees Celsius. So in terms of Kelvin, it will be 273 Kelvin. So according to Provost thesis hypothesis, we can say every object which having temperature greater than zero Kelvin will emit radiation at all time. Since human body temperature is greater than ice, <clears throat> So it will radiate more towards it and ice will radiate less. So there will be net flow of radiation from human body towards this. This net flow of radiation from human body to ice will tend to decrease our body thermal energy due to which we feel cold. Is it clear? Yes, sir. This is a similar mechanism that we feel in cool or winter season. That's why to preserve <clears throat> or to protect our body or our body thermal energy, we must wear sweater or some warm clothes. Similarly, in case of fire, let's say temperature of human body is 310 Kelvin and temperature of fire to be 100 degrees Celsius. So in terms of Kelvin, it will be about 373 Kelvin. Since in this part, temperature of fire is more as compared to boil temperature, so it will radiate more like this. So in this part, 
net flow of radiation will be from fire to human body temperature. So in this case, it will tend to increase our thermal energy of body, hence we feel hot in front of fire. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, just write it down. Done so. So in first part, in this you can say net flow will tend to decrease. body thermal energy so we feel told and similarly in the next part as well now to define this radiation let me define you some terms related to it some basic terms. Suppose <coughs> there is a body which is placed over burner. So that radiation or heat is falling on it continuously. Let's say amount of an energy or radiation incident on it is QI. So related to this radiation, we may define three different parts. Some of it may get reflected along this direction. Q reflected. <clears throat> Some of it may get absorbed and some may get transmitted along this way. So for the same incident radiation, we have three different <clears throat> use. So let me define you these three different terms. First is called absorptance, which is also called absorptivity or absorptive power. All are same. It is simply a ratio of total amount of radiation absorbed by the body to the total radiation falling on it. It is 
the ratio of <coughs> radiation absorbed by body to the total radiation falling on it. So it is denoted by A, which is equals to Q absorbed by Q incident. Since it is ratio of same term, so it will be unitless quantity. Next is related to reflection. We may define <coughs> reflectance, reflectivity or reflective power or are same. So it will be the ratio of radiation reflected by body to the total radiation incident on it or falling on it. So it will be R equals to Q reflected by Q incident. So again, it is just a ratio of same term. So it will be unitless quantity. And third, related to transmittance, It is the ratio of radiation transmitted by body to the total radiation incident on it. or falling on it. So it will be T equals to Q transmitted by Q incident. So again, it is unitless term. Ifra, any doubt? No, sir. Okay, just write it down.
Now, there is some relation between these three different terms. So let me define you the relationship. So using conservation of energy, we can say, Total amount of radiation falling on body distributed in three different parts. Some get absorbed, some get reflected, and some get transmitted. Now, if we move this QI to right side, so you're left with one equals to Q absorbed divided by Q incident, Q reflected divided by Q incident, and third, Q transmitted divided by Q incident. So these different ratio is nothing but absorptance, reflectance, and transmittance. So we can say <clears throat> A plus R plus T equals to one. Ifra, is it clear? Yes, sir. Now for different medium let me define this particular behavior first in case of vacuum there will be no absorbing tendency and there will be no reflecting tendency so transmittance will be maximum that is one so you can see vacuum will act as perfectly transmitted or perfect transmitted In case of mirror, where <clears throat> transmittance will be zero, so absorptance and reflectance must equal to one. But in case of mirror, most of the radiation falling on it get reflected back in same medium, so there will be least absorbing tendency to it. So we can say good reflected are bad absorber and vice versa. Ifra, is it clear? Yes. Sir. Next is in case of black body, it says transmittance will be zero, reflectance will be zero, and absorptance will be one. That is, it will act as perfect absorber. So we may define this black body as <clears throat> a body which having tendency to absorb all different radiation falling on it. A body having tendency to absorb all radiation falling on it. That's why its absorptance is equals to one. Just write it down.
Vielen Dank. Now some more term related to this black body. First is <clears throat> emissive power, which is also called intensity of emission. It is the amount of radiation or energy emitted by a body per unit area, per unit time. So it is the amount of radiation emitted by a body per unit area per unit time. So emissive power or simply intensity of radiation is equals to energy radiated by a body divide by its area of cross section times time. Energy per unit time is also called power. So we can say this is power radiated divided by area of cross section. And this emissive power is also called intensity. So this is the relation between these different terms. So it's SI unit <clears throat> is joule per second per meter square or joule per second is also called watt. So watt per meter square. Ifra, any doubt? No, sir. Now, if you have to compare emissive power of any ordinary body to the emissive power of black body, so we may define another term that is called emissivity or denoted by epsilon or small e. So it simply defines you the ratio of emissive power of any ordinary body to the emissive power of black body. So it is the ratio of emissive power of ordinary body to the emissive power of black body at that temperature. So epsilon or E equals to emissive power of any ordinary body divided by emissive power of black body. Ifra, any doubt? No, sir. You can just write it down.
Turn down. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, on the base of these different terms, there is a law which is called Kirchhoff's law of radiation. Kirchhoff's law of radiation. It said, the ratio of emissive power and absorptive power of any ordinary body is always equals to emissive power of black body at that temperature. The ratio of <clears throat> Emissive power and absorptive power of ordinary body is equals to Emissive power of black body at that temperature. Emissive power divided by absorptive power of any ordinary body is equals to emissive power of black body. as emissive power of any ordinary body is equals to emissive power of black body multiplied by absorptive power of that ordinary body. In this case, emissive power of black body at that temperature will be constant. So this is constant. So we can say emissive power of body will be directly proportional to its absorptive tendency or absorptive power. Ifra, is it clear? Yes, sir. So we can say good absorber must be good emitter. So from this part, we can say, since this is constant at that temperature, so this and this should be directly proportional. So from this part, we can say, good 
emitted are good absorber and according to the above relation in case of mirror good absorber are bad reflected so we can say and and are bad reflected any doubt no sir okay just try to down Okay. Now, in provost hypothesis, it simply says it will radiate and absorb radiation at all time. But how much radiation it will emit? It will be defined by another law, which is called Stephen's law. So next is Stephen's law of radiation. it simply defines in magnitude how much radiation a body will absorb or emit on the base of its body temperature so it says let me define first for black body then i will generalize for any different object so it says at any constant temperature t the amount of radiation emitted by black body per unit area per unit time is directly proportional to four power of its absolute temperature so it is the amount of radiation emitted by a black body per unit area per unit time is directly proportional to the fourth power of their absolute temperature it means amount of radiation emitted per unit area per unit time is also called emissive power so emissive power of black body is proportional to fourth power of its absolute temperature so if you replace this proportionate design we can write it as emissive power of black body is also called energy per unit area per unit time which is also called power 
per unit area, which is equals to intensity of radiation emitted and which is equals to energy per unit area, per unit time, it should be equals to proportionality constant sigma and temperature to the power four. This is all in case of black body, where sigma is called Stephens constant. <coughs> sigma equals to 5.67 into 10 to the power minus eight watt per meter square Kelvin to the power four. This is Stephens constant. Any doubt? No, sir. But if I have to change this particular formula in case of any ordinary body, so let me define you in case of any ordinary body. <clears throat> As epsilon equals to emissive power of any ordinary body divide by emissive power of black body. <clears throat> so from this, we can say emissive power of ordinary body will equals to epsilon times emissive power of black body and which is equals to sigma t to the power four. Now this epsilon <clears throat> ranges from this to this. In case of black body, it will be one. Ifra, Trinda? No, sir. Okay, just write it down. Then I'm giving you some problem related to this. Dancer. If two black body having temperature 2 to 7 degrees Celsius and 7 to 7 degrees Celsius. 
find ratio of their MSF power if ratio of their radii is two is to one find the ratio of power emitted by the just use the above formula and try to find Good. You got the same second answer.
what is the formula for power radiation, which is power divided by area of cross section equals to sigma into t to the power 4. So power will be equals to sigma a t to the power 4. <coughs> So P1 divided by P2 equals to A1 divided by A2 multiplied by T1 divided by T2 to the power 4. Bodies will be in shape of sphere. So its area will be 4 pi R square. So R1 divided by R2 square multiplied by T1 over T2 to the power 4. R1 over R2, we have 1 by 2, 2 by 1 square, and T1 over T2, we have 1 by 2 to the power 4. So on solving, you will get just 1 by 2 to the power 2, that is 1 is to 4. Ifra, is it clear? Okay. Done? Yes, I done. Now, what will happen <clears throat> if bodies are placed in any cold surrounding? If ordinary body is placed in cold surrounding. This is any ordinary body which having some temperature T. So due to its temperature, it will have tendency to emit radiation at all time. So it must be emitting radiation in all direction like this. Now, since it is placed in any cold surrounding, so cold surrounding, let's say having temperature T0. So according to its own temperature, it will also radiate energy in all direction. So there will be radiation along this way. <clears throat> like this. So in this part, we have two different flow of radiation. One is from body to the outer surrounding and the other is from surrounding to body. So if you have to calculate <clears throat> energy radiated by body So it will be equals to sigma into area temperature to the power four energy rated by body per unit time. I'm calculating per unit time. So it will be about this much. And from surrounding, we can say energy radiated by surrounding per unit time. So it will be 
sigma a t to the power four. Since these are not black body, so there will be epsilon, epsilon. So net flow of radiation from body to the surrounding will be difference of these two part. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So net flow of radiation per unit time. <coughs> will be equals to sigma epsilon A being common, temperature of body and temperature of surrounding. It will be better to use radiation or energy radiated energy absorbed from surrounding per time. So this is the net flow of radiation from body to surrounding per unit time. Now on this basis, let me define for any small temperature. If delta T equals to T minus T naught, where delta T is less than 100 degrees Celsius, I'm considering. So you may write T equals to delta T plus T naught. So if you put the value of T to be this and above part, net flow of radiation per unit time may also be written as dq over dt equals to epsilon a sigma and in place of t we may write t naught plus delta t to the power four minus t naught to the power four epsilon sigma a temperature to the power four take out as common so you're left with one plus delta t by t naught to the power four minus t naught to the power four ifra is it clear uh, yes sir. now bring it outside so you may write epsilon sigma a Temperature to the power four, and you you left with one plus delta t by t naught to the power four. So according to binomial expansion, we may write this four or it get multiplied with its coefficient. So it will be as four times delta t by t naught minus one. I just used one plus x to the power n may also be written as one plus n times x using binomial theorem. Any doubt? No, sir. Now on further simplifying it, one and minus one will cancel out. <clears throat> so you will write dq over dt equals to epsilon sigma a t naught to the power four common numerator we have four times delta t which is t minus t naught divide by t naught so on further simplifying it you'll get epsilon sigma area of body temperature to the power three multiplied by four times T minus T naught equals to DQ by DT. This expression is the basis of Newton's law of cooling. You must have learned about it. Let's say this is any constant part.
in which chapter you are in school so we have also started uh, this chapter thermal properties of matter okay that's why okay no problem so this is dq by dt and this is temperature of body and temperature of surrounding so from this part we can say if a hot body is placed in any cold surrounding then the rate of heat lost by it will be directly proportional to temperature of body and surrounding so this is called a rate of heat lost and this is any constant part and this is temperature of body and surrounding is it clear yes sir so first write it down to this part Done, sir. Did it out up to this part? No, sir. Now, from this part, we can say the rate of heat lost by a body when it is placed in any cold surrounding is directly proportional to temperature of body and temperature of surrounding. And a particular condition if their temperature difference is less than 100 degrees Celsius. So you'll be asked. What will be the limiting condition? What will be the condition at which limitants Newton's law of cooling work? So you'll say when temperature of body and temperature of surrounding will be less than 100 degrees Celsius. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So let's stop here for today. In next class, I will define this and prove it. Then one more topic that is Wien's displacement law. Okay. So we will finish this particular chapter in next class, inshallah. Okay.